how do we heal? Like for real, really, in our mind, in our heart, in our nervous system, in our emotions, in our bodies, healing. Like how do we make that happen, let that happen, attract it? <laughs> it's been my lifelong mission to figure that out. And I think for me anyway, a big uh, reason why it's taken me so long isn't because I'm a slow learner. It's because I am super in my mind, like intellectual, trying to figure it out from my mind. I've read, I don't know, gobs of books. Uh, I mean, just deeply, intensely have been studying spirituality and metaphysics since I was a kid. And I saw that I didn't know what the Bible was. We weren't like a religious family, but I saw it on the um, little coffee table, we used to call it, the table with the lamp next to the couch. And there it was, this big black Bible. I think one of my aunts who was Catholic gave it to my mom <laughs> to help straighten her out probably. <laughs> and um, it said, Holy Bible. And I had a cousin named Holly. So I was like, it's the Holly Bible. I didn't know what it was, but something about that big, maybe because it was big black leather with gold, you know, those um, embossed letters on it. I just sort of had this feeling that it was an important book and I wanted to read it. Read it. I even wrote about it in my little um, life story I wrote when I was eight. I want to read it one day. And then when I was 17, I went to a Bible college and, you know, I've been studying deep shit ever since <laughs> and trying so hard to crack the code to figure it out and have invested tens of thousands of dollars and hours. I can't even add it all up, but it just, it's been a major focus of my life, healing, 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 healing. And, um, I feel a little risky sharing this next bit of information because it's from a book that is very woo-woo. Like the Course in Miracles is a woo-woo, it's out there. Like most people accept the Bible, either they believe it or they don't, but it's not that controversial. Like, ooh, what a weird book. It's the Holy Bible, you know? But there are other sacred books that are, that are sacred. Um, and this to me, I have two favorites. I have, well, the Bible, of course, but I have A Course in Miracles and this book, which I'm going to show you now. And I was thinking of how to explain it or introduce it, but I'm just going to introduce the book. And if you're curious about it, you can research it on your own. Basically, <laughs> this is out there, I'm telling you. It was translated through uh, a beam of light to these... Um, very spiritual, mystical people who worked on this for like 30 years. And then they got these trans transmissions from Jesus. I know it's a leap to believe, but I believe it. I mean, I feel like I have a very firm foundation and I'm not like, um, like I said, I'm an intellectual, so I don't ignore reality, quote, and science and common sense and logic. And so with that said, Here's the book. It's called The I Am Discourses. <laughs> and um, all these pink places, these are the chapters that Jesus channeled. And I feel like this, uh, this paragraph here is the key, the key to why people, why me, why you, why some of us, most of us, don't heal or don't really get it. Like the millions of people who go to church, you know, they get their palms on Palm Sunday, they get their ashes on Ash Wednesday, or the they wail at the wailing wall, or they do their prayer six times a day, whatever religion it is, whatever it is. I think this is a key, a, a profound fundamental key to why we're not getting it, why it's not sinking in. And uh, this is just, Discourse number 30, oh, hey, Roman numerals, what a pain. <laughs> number XXXII, so number 32. It's the very last discourse. See, I, I write in the margins. <laughs> Jesus is talking about how all the 
problems in the world are because people made them, that there is harmony and love and perfection. And then people, because of our thoughts, because of what we do, we're the ones who create all the icky shit. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. And so he's talking about people, uh, Christians, probably, I'm going to assume, because he says, oh, exclamation point, oh, that humanity who through church service after church service are acknowledging my ascension, oh, exclamation point, why can they not feel the true reality and know that in my ascended eternal light body, I can and do reach all who will open their hearts to my reception. Oh, children of earth, learn to couple. Here's the key. Here's the key. Learn to couple your feeling of the truth with the acknowledgement of the truth that you wish to have manifest in your life. Then you will be enabled to go forth to any height of achievement in your quest for freedom. Now, this next part I wanna read is especially for those of you who come from fundamental Christianity. If what I'm saying feels like heresy to you, just stop watching. <laughs> but this is my journey and I do feel that the Christ consciousness belongs to everybody, everyone, atheists, Jewish people, everyone. It's not a Christian-owned commodity. It's a universal energy. So I love this next um, chapter where he clarifies. For someone like me who went to a Bible college for two years and had teachers like, God bless them, they were good people, but dogmatically like brainwash me and inculcate and indoctrinate, indoctrinate me. For me to read a book like this and to get like the straight from... This, the horse's mouth. <laughs> Sorry, God. <laughs> it's like exciting. So check this out. I am the open doorway, which no man can shut. Your mighty I am presence. That means mine and yours. You, 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 everyone, every normal, everyday person has the I am presence. That is the truth, the way, and the life. So not just Jesus. Us, we are the way, the truth, and the life. Your mighty I am presence is the light that lighteth everyone that comes into the world. Your mighty I am presence is the directing intelligence, your exhaustless, sustaining energy. Your mighty I am presence is the voice of truth speaking within your heart, the light enfolding you in its luminous presence. Oh, man. I just want to sit in that luminous presence all day, every day. <laughs> Your eternal belt of protection. I remember studying, I think, I forget if it's the Old or the New Testament, where he talks about the breastplate of faith, the helmet of salvation, the, the belt of, I forget all the metaphors, but I love it. I love me a good metaphor, right? So your eternal belt of protection through which no human creation can pass. Okay, I'm going to stop there because what if all our pain, all our suffering, depression, sickness, illness, now none of this is about it's your fault. I will never, ever, 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 ever say that. It's not about it's your fault. But what if everything that we see on this planet is a creation that comes from us, that we created it with our thoughts, our feelings, and our beliefs. And what if there is a source of power within us when Moses was uh, looking at the burning bush and then he had to go down and tell the Israelites who sent him. He's like, who sent me? Who are you? And God said, I am that I am. Mic drop, right? <laughs> So what if that I am, that I am, is what we am, what we is, what we are? Just think for a minute. Like, I get it. I get it for all the intellectuals out there. What does that mean? Believe me, my mind has been chewing on this for decades. 
But what if we put aside all of the like conf confusion and just try to feel into the possibility that we are, that the I am is within us, that we are the I am, that there is no separation. There is, there is no abandonment. We were never kicked out of the Garden of Eden. We left. What if that's actually, literally, metaphysically, and practically true? And what if we practice feeling that? Feeling that. Believing that. Knowing that. Be still and know that I am. I am, I am God, I am light, I am the resurrection and the life. That's all we need. And from this place of silence and stillness and acceptance and feeling, feeling. When you were a little child, when you were a baby and your mommy hopefully <laughs> held you and loved you and if you were really lucky, nursed you, swaddled you, fed you, cared, you felt in your little heart love. And somehow on our journey to adulthood, we lose that feeling. I did. I lost that feeling. And in my heart was put fear and anger and pain and rage and hatred and triggers galore. What if we could open our heart now as adults, as mature women, and said, I'm willing, I'm scared, I'm mad, I'm still hurting, I'm still wounded from all this shit that happened to me, but I'm willing. I'm willing to feel my connection with you. And if God as the Father freaks you out, God is equally mother. I'm willing to feel my connection to my mother God, my father God. The most loving symbol of God you can imagine. Feel your connection to that. Feel it in your heart. Dear God, dear almighty infinite intelligence, and divine supreme love. Help us feel. Help us feel your love. Remove all barriers to love. Namaste. God bless you. Feel. Today, give yourself five minutes to just go in nature, go somewhere quiet, and put your hand on your heart and let yourself feel your connection to all love. Be still and know that you are the light. I am is what you are.